What's really interesting to me is that culturally, I feel like women are targeted more for weight loss treatments. And I feel like culturally over time, we've really focused on weight loss being a calories in, calories out kind of equation. And so the way that we deal with the calories in is we restrict our calories. You know, there's a lot of popularity in counting your calories, um, you know, restricting certain food groups. And then from a calories out perspective, again, there's this focus on like how many calories can I burn doing certain types of movement. And I think the thermodynamics of weight loss, again, that like energy in, energy out balance while it is definitely part of the equation, if you're just focusing on that and not focusing on the hormone regulation, and again, this idea of preserving metabolism as you're going through a weight loss journey, you can end up being in a place where weight loss gets really, really difficult. And your hormones are going to respond by basically freaking out and saying, why are you starving me? Why is there so much energy going, you know, going out and not coming in? And so I think being able to be in that sweet spot where we're not triggering that reflux in the body. So again, kind of flying under the radar, so to say, where patients are able to achieve a negative thermodynamic balance. So again, a little bit of calories out without feeling those hunger pains or without sending their body into that starvation response is really key to successful weight loss and metabolism preservation. One of the things that I have on my new patient intake form is I ask patients, how many times have you gained or lost 10 pounds in your life? And this is really helpful for me because this is a phenomenon that we describe in obesity medicine as yo-yo weight loss or yo-yo dieting. We know that individuals that have a history of yo-yo dieting have an increased risk of having metabolic slowing. Every time you lose weight, you do lose muscle mass. And every time you regain weight, unless you are, again, like training for a bodybuilding competition or doing something where you're you know, really putting on a lot of muscle, most of the time we regain fat. And so over time, what happens is, if every time you lose weight, you're losing fat and muscle, and then every time you're regaining weight, you're gaining fat, over time, a person's body fat percentage can slowly increase over time as their muscle mass slowly decreases over time, creating a wider gap between the strong hormone signaling of that fat mass tissue compared to a slower metabolism due to lower muscle mass.